Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube, where the watches are the stars. And on your screen, you do see the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. And this watch is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. Happy birthday. Incredible. Time rushes so quickly. And if we just think about what happened, Rolex just wanted to sell a good chronograph for timing sports activities or races whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, this became the most iconic and I think the most sought after watch on the market in the moment. And everybody's crazy about it and everybody wants one and crazy. That's how it is. So happy birthday once again to the Daytona. And in this video, we will show you the new ones. We were able to film them in Geneva during Watches and Wanderers. I will explain you the details of the new ones. We will compare the former one and a new one where you can see some little details, some differences, and there are differences. Experts among you know what I'm talking about because the former version had two different cases. So the steel version, steel gold and gold, had one case and the platinum was always in a different case. It was a little bit bigger. Tiny differences differentiated the case of the platinum one to the rest. And we will show you this in this video. And of course, we will also talk a little bit about the history of this chronograph that was born in 1963, 60 years ago. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Let's go in medias res and let me tell you about the new version that has been presented a week ago in Geneva. The version that is now sold features a diameter of 40 millimeter. The so-called lug to lug distance is 47.5 millimeters. The thickness is 11.9 millimeter. And the bracelet tapers down from 20 in between the lugs to 16 in the folding clasp. The main visible difference in between the former version is quite easily visible when the Daytona features a ceramic, a cerachrome inlay in the basil. And when it features a ceramic inlay in the basil, then you will see that it is always edged with a band of either oyster steel or gold, so or platinum, of course. And this makes the difference. So the end, the outer end of the basin now features that edged band and makes a different look. If, of course, it is a steel gold version, it still features a yellow gold basil with the tachymeter scale engraved with graduations, numerals and inscriptions and so on and so on. So it, nothing changed particularly. What is also different is, but you have to look close. It's, it's not so easy to discover all this. What also changed are some details on the dial. The indexes are slimmer and the rings of the sub counters on some of the dials are a little bit slimmer too. But these are differences. I think when you don't know that they are, you don't even see it. A 40 millimeter case is still waterproof up to 100 meters and there are versions in oyster steel in 18 karat gold or platinum. And what's really, really new and a little bit of a sensation is that from this year on the Cosmograph Daytona in platinum features a transparent case back with a sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating on top. Wow. <laughs> and you can see the incredible new 4131 Caliber that has been changed a little bit, evolved. It evolved from the Caliber 4130 that was sold since the year 2000. And you all know that it was in the year 2000 when a new millennium started that Rolex introduced the 4130, the in house chronograph Caliber. This replaced the one they built together before with Zenit. Zenit delivered the base and Rolex modified the base. They changed the frequency and lots of other things on that movement. But since the year 2000, the 4130 is the one that has been used. And now the new one, the 4131 is the one you get when you buy the toner today. The Caliber 4131 incorporates the patented Chronogy escapement of Rolex made of nickel phosphorus, which combines high energy efficiency with great dependability 
And this is very, very interesting. It is also resistant to strong magnetic fields, and I have never been reading anything comparable in any Rolex description or information, strong magnetic fields. So we might expect some announcements in the near future how much Rolex movements do withstand strong magnetic fields. Rolex has not told us yet how much, but I assume enough, more than enough probably. The oscillating weight of the platinum version is made out of 18 karat yellow gold. Through the see-through case back, you can see the oscillating weight and the beautifully decorated movement. If it is not the platinum version, the oscillating weight is made out of function, a heavy material, but you don't see it anyhow, so don't worry about it. It will just work properly, and this is the most important thing. When it is fully wound, the watch will have a power reserve of 72 hours. Also good to know. And what is now really nice to see is how Rolex sets a new quality standard in decoration. Rolex is decorating its bridges with the so-called Rolex Côte de Genève, an exclusive decoration that differs from the traditional Côte de Genève by the addition of a slight polished groove between each band. And you can nicely see this through the transparent case back of the new platinum version. If we're talking about precision, the Calibre 4131 is guaranteed by Rolex by testing it separately. You know that these movements first go to COSC, only the movement, then COSC is minus four plus six seconds, but the Rolex does, of course, better. That would be ridiculous. It's minus two plus two seconds. And when the movement is certified by COSC, the movement comes back, is encased, and Rolex is testing the entire watch with an internal testing procedure, a tough internal testing procedure. And through this internal testing procedure, they also guarantee you that the watch is accurate to minus two plus two seconds under all conditions you can imagine. Let me show you now some of the differences between the old platinum case and the steel case. If you look at this picture on your screen, you will clearly see that the platinum case was a little bit bigger. Because if you look on the steel case, you see that the basal, the serochrome basal stands out a little bit. And on the platinum version, it is almost in line with the case band on the side. And this marginal, this is a little, little, tiny difference. Also made the difference in sizes. Rolex always said 40 millimeters, but the experts know and have been measuring it. It was around 38.5 millimeters. And now the new version, the 2023 version, only uses the former platinum case. So we are at the diameter of 40 millimeters. Also interesting to see is how the log of the new watch looks like. It has a kind of a feet. It is a different log than we were used to see before. And there is also a little third difference, very much. I didn't know that. And I had someone who explained it to me and I said, that's incredible because if you look at a watch, you don't see that. Look closely and you can see that the logs on the side where you have the push pieces on the steel version were a little bit thinner. Then, compared on the same picture, the locks belonging to the side of the push pieces and the crown of the platinum version, they were a little bit thicker. So, on the steel version, the locks on the side of the push pieces and the crown were a little bit slimmer than on the opposite side. And this is something probably not many of you know, but it is an interesting difference. And I myself also had to learn that. I didn't know that. Even though we are mentioning the prices in our video in Swiss francs, I do recommend you, please, if you are not in Switzerland, please go on the Rolex website of your country and you will be able to discover the correct price, especially when you're watching this video months after it has been released, the price might have changed. So please always go on the website of Rolex and it will show you the correct price of your favorite Daytona watch, the only correct price of your favorite Daytona watch. So please forget all these fantasy prices of resellers, this greedy business, all what they're doing, they are fooling you, nothing else. They are fooling you. Don't ever, please make me a favor. Do not buy any Rolex for an overprice. If you do so, sorry if I do say this, you must be stupid. 
there is an official list price for every Rolex because Rolex defines and knows what to charge for its watches. This is a correct price. It is even a very good price if you consider the quality and what you get. But what is done on the back doors from the ADs, etc., etc., is disgusting. And I really think you should concentrate on loving the watch through its technology, through its developments, through its accuracy, and so on. And do not speculate. Don't get in this crazy business of speculating. Buy it because you want it. And if you buy a Rolex, you will get one of the best watches on the market, including, of course, the Daytona. That is one of the best chronographs on the market with one of the best chronograph calibers that has ever been made. So never, ever, please do me a favor. And if you now say, but how can I get the watch without paying an overpriced? Forget it. Buy something else and there will be one day where you will get your watch for the regular price because this crazy market will break down the sooner or the later. That's not normal. As we all know, Rolex is obsessed with all details. They are really going into every detail. They deliver excellent quality and are obsessed about readability, etc., etc., quality, everything. But there's one little thing I am wondering a little bit why they didn't take the occasion with that 60th anniversary and with the occasion of presenting a new, a modified version of the former one, why they forgot or why maybe they didn't want it. I don't know why they forgot. In my uh, humble opinion, they should have done it to change, to change the graduation on the dial of the chronograph. The graduation in between two seconds. You go on the dial, look closer on the dial, you take one second index and then you take the next second index. And in between these second indexes, you see four little dots. This is the graduation of the chronograph. And the graduation of the chronograph, as you see it, is still taken from the old, from the first models, starting from 1963 onwards. When this watch still had movements, with a oscillating frequency of 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour or one-fifth of a second. So the hand of the chronograph was swiping over the dial in the speed of one-fifth of a second. And now count. If you go from one of these indexes to the next one, you count one, two, three, four, five. And this is exactly that what you would have been able to read from the dial of your cosmograph if it still would be powered by a chronograph movement that has 18,000 semi-oscillation or one-fifth of a second. But today, today, and starting with the Zenit movement, they changed the oscillating frequency from 18,000 to 28,800, one-eighth of a second, one-eighth, not longer, one-fifth of a second. And what should have been done, in my humble opinion, is change the reading, the possibility of reading correct timing on your dial. And what you need then are only three little dots in between the second indexes. Would have enabled the correct reading because you read beside, on it, beside, on it. And now count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So they should have taken away one of these little dots and put the three dots perfectly in between the two indexes and then you would have had a correct possibility of a correct reading on that chronograph. With the graduation as it is delivered now, it is not possible because the central second hand of the chronograph swipes over the dial with a speed of one eighth of a second. And if you want to do a reading, then you have to have appropriate graduation on the dial and this is not the case. If you don't believe me, please go and look on so many other chronographs that do feature a frequency of 28800. Take Omega, take IWC Schaffhausen, take many more. They are all correct. They corrected this and you will always find three dots. They should have, oh, they might have done it. It's, it's, an, it's a decision. You can always say, okay, we stay loyal to our design. We don't want that. That's okay. But I, in my humble opinion, I would have done it because it would have added something that could have been done for this 60th anniversary of that chronograph. Besides this little detail, most of you probably didn't even think about that this is <laughs> important on a watch, but okay, it's the Daytona, you want it and you wear it. And most of you probably don't even care about such a little detail, but it is, yeah, it's a detail. 
And Watch Advisor is about watches and not about speculation and hyping. And uh, yeah, we're different. So we talk also about these little details. And if you look at the actual Daytona, it's a beautiful watch. It's a perfect watch. And yeah, everything started in 1963. That was when Rolex launched a new generation of two watches, as many other brands did, divers, extreme watches for any purpose. And of course, chronographs, because people wanted to buy reliable, good chronographs. And the intention of Rolex was to have a professional watch for timing purposes. And this started in 1963. Of course, the watch evolved and different dials were introduced. And this also led to the fact that the range expanded in the early years. And there was one special version, of course, it became world famous. And it is the so-called Paul Newman dial, the American actor who was also a racing driver and an icon, you know him, regularly wore a Daytona with this particular dial. And this was then when all of a sudden, yes, 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 became a nickname. And all the Rolex watches to have nicknames today. I hate them, all of them, but okay, that's how it is. And they need to have these nicknames, obviously. And this is when it started. This watch got a nickname. And yes, you can see this on our picture as well. It got a red graduation. And you see this, this red graduation. And if you look here and I come back to what I explained before concerning the graduation on the actual version, if you look on the red graduation, you can nicely see those four little dots in between the second indexes. And this is because at the time being, yes, this watch had a caliber with an oscillating rate of 18,000 semi-oscillations, two and a half hertz or one fifth of a second. And yes, the second central hand was swiping over the dial with the speed of one fifth of a second. When the Daytona in 1965 uh, got its uh, screw down chronograph pushers, it also was named Oyster because it got waterproof or sufficient waterproof. And so the name changed from Rolex Cosmograph to Rolex Oyster Cosmograph. And then you all know the story, of course, that on the American market to also celebrate the fact that Rolex was very close to racing activities, and especially in Daytona, the legendary Daytona race. So it was very much linked to that race. And then all of a sudden the word Daytona also showed up on the dials and it then became the legendary and today well-known Rolex Oyster Perpetual because it also got an automatic rotor later. It got automatic and then all of a sudden it was the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona. In 1988, the look of the Daytona or the Cosmograph dramatically changed. The biggest difference was, of course, the size. It increased to about 40 millimeters and the watch got a self-winding movement coming in the early days in 1988 from Zenit. The base came from Zenit. We have to clearly say this. And Rolex massively changed this movement to its specifications. And then one of the biggest changes as well happened in the year 2000 when Rolex introduced in the new millennium the new 4130 chronograph in-house, fully in-house developed chronograph caliber and fully in-house manufactured chronograph caliber. And then there was one last change in the year 2016. This was when the Daytona got its monoblock, serachrom, basil, and this totally changed the look once again. And the look was kept or is kept until today. But as you all know, as you all know, and I mentioned this before, the monoblock serachrome inlay of the basil is edged with a band of oyster steel or gold or platinum. The new 2023 Cosmograph Daytona from Rolex is still a Daytona. The differences in between the former version 
and the actual version are, as we know, hydraulics minimal. You have to really look closely when you see such a chronograph on the wrist of someone, or if you see one, you have to look closely. Is it a 2023 edition, etc., etc. There's a little difference. Rolex always makes some difference, but what happened for sure is the watch got better. And Rolex is investing a lot in details we don't see and we don't know. They will not even tell us that they do, but you can be sure that in terms of quality, the 2023 version is probably much better than the former version. We don't know, but I assume it is. So let us always, when we talk about Rolex, focus on the capacities of the Rolex Group of engineering, designing, manufacturing the best watches. They are so incredible. Please, let us focus on their watchmaking expertise, on their watchmaking history, etc., etc. And please, not, not on Watch Advisor. Do not talk with me about hyping, speculating, selling, reselling this watch or making some extra money by getting one and flipping it. I couldn't care less. I really couldn't care less. I am amazed about what Rolex does in terms of watches and the rest is none of our business, at least not on Watch Advisor. So I hope you liked our little presentation about the new Daytona. I think the pictures we were able to show you were excellent. I hope I could explain you a little bit the differences. If you have questions, you use the comment section as always. But please, any comments concerning flipping and stuff, I couldn't care less. None of my business. I would never ever be so stupid to play these silly games you're forced to play to get such a watch. If I can't buy it, okay, I will orientate myself, think out of the box and go for something else. My last words, yes. And before ending the video, I want to say thank you to Percy from luxify.da, germany.da, Delta Echo. Percy was so kind to provide me the pictures you saw here that showed the difference in between the old and the new ones. I didn't have the pictures. I called him and he was so nice to give them to me. Thank you, Percy. And if you want to learn about Rolex, go on his website, luxify.de. You will see that this man knows a lot about Rolex, much more than I do probably. And no, what, what means probably, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube, where the watches are the stars. Bye-bye.